So in the early 80s, many companies were making Pac-Man clones to capitalize on the success of the original game. Most of these were games that had similarities to Pac-Man, but were otherwise original titles. But then there were the bootleg games that were just hacks of the arcade original. Most of these are very basic hacks with only minor level or graphic edits, but then there were a few that were heavily changed. Now obviously these were not authorized by Namco or Midway. So anyway, why were these bootlegs being created in the first place, and how did Namco or Midway respond to these? Well, let's take a look. What's going on guys? It's Poger coming at you with another video. So we're going to be getting right into the Pac-Man bootlegs. As a reminder, we do have a Discord server now. We got about 50 people in there. It's pretty solid. We've been posting pictures of our game collections, talking about food, posting memes, and just having a good time. If you're interested, just go to discord.poger.net or just click on the direct link in the description. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button right there. We're at 6k right now, really great number to be at. Now let's get to 7k. Alright. Time for the Pac-Man bootlegs. So there's many different kinds of Pac-Man clones. There's the ones that were inspired by Pac-Man, but they don't use any code from the Pac-Man ROM, and there's enough differences to qualify them as original titles. A good example of this would be Ladybug. Just like in Pac-Man, you collect the dots to win, and there's enemies that chase you, but there's a few changes. You can actually make the walls rotate, which is a cool innovation. And then there's the bootleg games. These ones do use the source code of Pac-Man and are modified to alter the gameplay somewhat. The most common alterations you would see in arcades are the speed hacks. These ones took the original game and made Pac-Man much faster. It's such a small change, but it really affected the way you played Pac-Man. This added a whole new dynamic to the game. Now obviously these bootlegs were unauthorized, and Namco would eventually threaten legal action against some of these games. With that said, let's take a look at some of the more basic hacks. These are the low effort ones, with very few changes made to the graphics or levels. First we'll look at New Puck X. It's a very basic level edit with no graphical changes, not much to say here. The maze looks very similar to the original, but there's actually three tunnels instead of one. So while there's not much to this one, a bunch of other Pac-Man bootlegs would use this maze as a template. Case in point, the next two hacks we'll look at are New Puck 1 and New Puck 2. New Puck 1, which is commonly referred to as Pac-Man Hearts, is exactly the same as New Puck X, but with hearts, obviously, instead of dots. New Puck 2, on the other hand, actually has two mazes instead of one. The first maze is very similar to New Puck X, but more tunnels were added and the bumper at the bottom was increased. The second maze is a completely open course where you can freely roam around. It's actually very interesting playing this level because the original Pac-Man never allowed you to navigate in an open playfield like this. Both of these games have a small graphical edit when you collect a power pellet. Rather than turning blue like they do in the regular game, the ghosts now change shape. So unlike the first bootleg, these two games have some minor graphical changes, and one of them even features two mazes. We're starting to see some minor innovations, but these are still very basic hacks. Namco would threaten legal action against the company that made these two games, but not much is known outside of that. Now let's look at Hangly Man. I believe it's supposed to be Hungry Man, not to be confused with the TV dinners, but it was mistranslated. Anyway, this one has a few more innovations. Sometimes when you collect a power pellet, the inside of the stage disappears. The platforms are still there, but you just can't see them. This is actually a pretty cool feature, and it's an interesting twist on the Pac-Man formula. The level design is pretty lousy in this one though. Near the tunnels, you have a completely open space that you can roam around in. Was this a mistake? Like in New Puck 2, there's actually two mazes, but the second one is not symmetrical at all. What kind of level design is this? You actually have a vertical tunnel, which is not present in any of the normal Pac-Man games. Overall, this is a sloppy bootleg with very bad level design, but it has some cool features. Namco actually did take legal action against the two companies that were responsible for this game, and a settlement was reached at an undisclosed amount. 
So these are the more basic Pac-Man bootlegs. For the most part, these are just level hacks, but we do get some cool innovations like the power pellets making the levels disappear and the multiple mazes. But if you think that's it, well, we're just getting started. So now we're going to talk about the more advanced bootlegs. These ones usually feature heavy modifications to the original code, usually major graphical changes, and sometimes even big gameplay changes. Let's get started. Here's Pac-Man. Alright, so what's so special about this one? The colors are ugly, the levels are exactly the same, and it just looks like Pac-Man to me. Well, this is actually running on a Galaxian cabinet. This is absolutely huge because Namco or Midway never offered Pac-Man conversion kits for Galaxian arcade machines. So this gave arcade owners a way to upgrade their units without having to spend more money on a brand new Pac-Man machine. Alright, now let's check out Caterpillar. This one is just Hangley Man but with a graphical overhaul. Nothing special, but the intermissions are actually pretty cool. They added custom music and even made a giant butterfly sprite in the first cutscene. Pretty cool. Now let's look at Joy Man. Now, I'm not sure what character you're supposed to be, but we see some decent graphical changes here. The gimmick with this one is the disappearing gaps. Throughout the stage, you have these openings with power pellets inside of them. Every time you die, all the gaps where the power pellets were collected will be filled in. Pretty cool twist. Alright, here's Piranha. This is one of the more common bootlegs you see, and it even received its own arcade cabinet. As we can see, there's a lot of graphical changes here. The ghosts are now jellyfish, and you're a piranha. Similar to New Puck 2 and Hangley Man, the stages are completely open, and it's very difficult because of this. It's hard to line yourself up with the dots, and because there's no stage boundaries, the ghosts can easily chase you down. I don't think the original developers of Pac-Man intended for any mazes to be open like this. There's a vertical tunnel, but it's broken. You're able to go down a tunnel without any problem, but you cannot go back up. I assume this is a glitch. I'm also not a fan of the graphics, it just looks like a pixelated mess. There's an earlier version of this game which looks a little more simplistic, and the ghosts actually look more like their original form. This version doesn't look super great either, but it's much better than the other one. So when you start the game, the intro music sounds like a jumbled mess. Overall, I'm surprised this game got all the attention because it's super clumsy. It doesn't look great, sound great, or play great. Namco actually did threaten legal action against the developers of this game, but not much is known about it outside of that. The game Abscam was made by the same developers as Piranha, some company called GL. Not sure why they thought making a game based on an FBI sting operation was a good idea. Anyway, I like this one more than Piranha because it's not an open stage, and the graphics are better. There's even background music. Yeah, I'm sorry you had to hear that. So while the game itself is nothing special, it's cool how much they modified the original Pac-Man. It almost looks like a completely different game. Now we're gonna check out the game Streaking. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna be talking about these kind of games again. You play as a woman that starts off naked, and you periodically collect articles of clothing. The cops are chasing you, I assume for indecent exposure. The game is obviously really strange. The woman is drawn very poorly. Her arms flail up and down for whatever reason, and she doesn't walk normally. So, nudity aside, this is actually a super advanced bootleg with many modifications done to the original source code. The power pellets no longer make the enemies vulnerable, instead they transport you to the opposite side of the stage. You also have this fatigue meter that gradually increases. If the meter gets too high, you automatically lose a life, so basically there's a time limit. When you collect the shoes, the game will suddenly increase in speed. I'm actually surprised at how well done this game is. This isn't just a graphics or level hack, they actually modified the source code and added some custom features like the fatigue meter and the power pellets that transport you. This is actually one of the best Pac-Man bootlegs I've seen. So why were companies making bootleg Pac-Man games, and why were these an attractive option for arcade owners? 
Well, Pac-Man was a very successful game, and a lot of these bootlegs offered a twist on the original formula. If people loved the original, imagine how much they would love the speed hack version, or the one with the alternate maze. Not only that, but these bootleg versions were cheaper too. Rather than spending anywhere from $3,000 to $4,000 on a new cabinet, why not pay much less for a bootleg that will still attract customers? But we're not done yet. There's still one more game we have to talk about. So in the early 80s, a few MIT students formed the company GCC, which specialized in modifying arcade games. With the success of their first game, Super Missile Attack, which was a hack of Missile Command, they focused their attention on Pac-Man. This would result in a heavily modified version of the original game, called Crazy Auto. This new bootleg gave the original Pac-Man a complete facelift. The graphics were more colorful, there's four mazes instead of one, the intermissions are completely different from the original, and the sound has been completely changed. Unlike the other bootlegs, which were usually rough around the edges, Crazy Auto was professionally done. GCC would team up with Midway and Amco, and Crazy Auto would eventually become an official game in the Pac-Man series. So why is this important? Well, Namco and Midway recognized that people liked some of the Pac-Man bootlegs, as a response, some of the features that were common in these bootlegs would later be included in official Pac-Man games. In 1982, for example, Midway released Pac-Man Plus, which added a few of the extra features that were previously only found in bootlegs, like the disappearing levels. In 2001, Namco released the Ms. Pac-Man Galaga arcade cabinet, and this actually included the speed hack if you put in a code to enable it. Previously, this was a feature you could only find in bootleg Pac-Man cabinets. I think it's really cool that Namco swallowed their pride and gave their fans what they wanted. Imagine a company like Nintendo doing something like this. With the success of Pac-Man, there were a few companies who wanted to piggyback off it. These companies modified the source code of the original game and created bootlegs. Some of these were just basic hacks with small changes to the level and graphics, but some of these companies were more ambitious and created bootlegs that had major graphical overhauls, and sometimes even new custom features that were not in the original. One of these bootlegs would eventually become an official game in the Pac-Man series, but rather than ignoring the existence of these bootlegs, Namco and Midway acknowledged them and even implemented some of the features that were common in these bootlegs in official Pac-Man games. Even at your own expense, sometimes it's better to give your fans what they want. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.